everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So this is a requested video. I've actually received a lot of requests after I showed this sample that I made using the Sibley Made Crafts new collection. And it was a treasure chest. And I briefly shared it just to show you and give you inspiration. And then loads of you have said, please show us how to make it. And some of you have already sent me pictures of the dies that you've already ordered. Um, they make lots of other things, but you can also make this really fun treasure chest. It's a great size. Open up inside there and you've got lots of room for treats and then it just closes down. The best part for me is that gorgeous padlock there. Absolutely love it, it's stunning. And uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward to make, so let me show you how. Okay, so I've gone and die cut everything, so I don't think you need to watch me do all of that. And this is the dies that I've been using. So this is the window treat box die set. And then you have this one here, which you can buy as an addition to go with it. Now, you could just buy this one because there are actually quite a few of the elements you could use on their own. All of this down here, these are the decorative corners, so you can see there what I've cut. The padlock is just gorgeous, and I've already started using it on other projects. I just absolutely love this one, and I'll show you how to get that dimension and what I've done to get that effect. The knocker there is really nice as well. You can do that on lots of your 3D bigger projects. You know, I like to do like, um, you know, the miniature homes and things like that. You could certainly incorporate these things into that and also on other gift boxes and bags. This is a really nice embossing plate and it gives you that wood grain. And then you've got these arches here which create that top of the, you know, that chest look to the project. However, you could easily incorporate these into other things that you might make as well. So, like I said, this is the one, the main one here. So I'm gonna take out the dies. Now for this one, you do need a large die cutting machine. But you'll have this is the largest die here so I've gone ahead and die cut two of those okay you'll see them there and I've used the 300 GSM and this is the craft card and I use the do crafts craft card and then everything else that I've cut comes from the additions so but also in this one here if you haven't seen it I have shared all of the projects I made in another tutorial so like a bit of an unboxing just showing the collection also Helen has some great um inspiration on her channel and she will be doing I'm sure some tutorials with this product but also check out her chanda where she did do lots of demos as well but you get all these pieces you get car um, tags you've got a banner there you've got all these decorative edges lattice effect there's tons in there but you just need those two for the moment then from the additions you'll see I've cut these pieces here okay so there is the square now it's well it's I say a square it's actually it isn't um, equal sides so although it looks it it is more of a rectangle so which I'll explain in a minute then one of that one there oh I actually need two oh I've got two I thought then why didn't I do two there we go two and that is oh that's the plate I do love that plate we've got that one there so I've done two of the hinges and two of those there and then here is the padlock so what I've gone ahead and done is I've die cut it with some gold mirrored cardstock and then I've also gone ahead and die cut two brown pieces of fun foam and then in between that, oh I haven't done it on this one, oh I can still do it, that's okay, I'm going to put a black piece of cardstock just like I did on the gift bag I've recently shared and then I'm going to cover it finally with another piece of fun foam. Okay, so I'll do that later. And then there's the knocker. I've done the same with that, I'm, but I'm not using the whole piece. I'm just using the decorative part and then I stick my padlock on that piece there. Or well, you could do it that way. It's entirely up to you, but I just think it's a nice touch. And that is this one here. And then those corners, take out everything here. There's the corners there. So I have die cut, I think 18 altogether because I have four on the front. I have then four on both sides, four on the back and then two on the front of the lid and on the back of the lid, I think. You also have, that's the other part of the knocker. So you imagine that's gonna be like that. But you also have this piece here, which will give you like a, a studded effect. So you could also use that with this kind of treasure chest feel. I haven't, but it's certainly another nice addition that you could use. So that's all the parts you need, but I am going to keep the plate out because I need to do that one in a moment. Okay, now the next step is completely optional, but what I did do with this is I distressed it. Now, it's better to distress before you add the glue because if you add the glue and any of the glue seeps out, it will almost create a resist against your inks. So you'll get a just maybe not a nice consistent look. So I would recommend that you distress before rather than after you've glued it all together. So I've just got a brown ink here. 
and I've got one of my big blending brushes which I'm just going to load up and then I just go into the sides and I'm just you can see there how quickly you don't really need to worry about these side pieces but what I would say is just fold on the score lines because you can then fold it over fold those ones down as well you can fold it over and go in so so just on all the folds because you see that really lovely deep colour you get and it just gives it that authentic worn chest look <laughs> and um, it doesn't take long to do at all it is optional you might not be doing this look so you don't want to have brown on it but even if you're doing like a shabby chic project it's always nice to distress your edges so I'm just going to go around and do that on everything distressed and now I would suggest that you use your embossing plate here this wood grain and you want the kind of square shape here and we're going to emboss onto this so you can just about fit two across there but I said here that it's not quite a square I find it quite handy that if along the shorter side just find the halfway mark and just draw a pencil line all the way through because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it to as a guide for my embossing plate so I'm going to line this up here but also when we go to stick the hinges down it's a good guide to make sure that you've got it you know perfectly wrapped around these arch pieces here all right so again it will all make sense in a moment now the nice thing about these embossing plates is that you don't have to change your sandwich on your die cutting machine it just acts as just a normal die so I'm going to lay this one down lay my plate down so you can see there, there is a line that will emboss. So I want to kind of line that up with the, with the pencil line. So it's in by about a smidge. So we all know what a smidge is. A smidge is a smidge. So I'm just going to bring it in just a tiny bit. doesn't matter if it overlaps at all. You know, it's a wood grain. They're not perfect looking. And then I'm just going to sit that down, run that through. And instantly you get this beautiful wood grain. Now what I'll do in a moment is I'll go back over that with a little bit of my brown ink just to really show that up. But now I just want to flip it over and then I'm just going to lay that down again, just overlapping it ever so slightly. Run that one through. Okay, so now we've got that lovely embossed piece. Now if you want to, you can do it over more of it. Now I haven't done that just because I'm decorating it um, but it is an option if you want to do that so I'll just show you you just grab the plate and it will fit you don't need that's going to be the base but this would be one of the sides oh no sorry yeah that would be the back actually but you can see there if you pop it in there and you can run that through on all of them as well okay but for this tutorial I'm just going to stick with the, the top there so what you want to do now is we're going to attach these arched pieces Okay, so we're just going to focus on this lid for the moment. So I'm just going to grab some of my fast tack glue because it would just keep, you know, just speed things up. You don't want to be kind of holding it there for ages. And also what I would suggest is that you put a curve into this just to help you. And it will, you know, the fact that it's kind of already now in that position that it's going to kind of stay. Actually, also, I forgot, I did want to put a little bit of... Brown. I'm not re-inked this, I'm just using the ink that's already on there, but it will just help that kind of lift a little bit. I'm going to rub that pencil line out um, in a minute. Mind you, I need to kind of do it before. Really what you could do is just do a pencil mark just on the little edge there and there because you do need it, it's quite a handy guide. So I'm going to rub out the middle one there as long as you can see it you know I can just see the pencil mark there and then you can easily rub that off once you put it together Go back over that ink again with the ink there we go right so what you want to do first of all I find it's easier that you look at the center of this here and you've got these two teeth and there's the middle point you want that middle point to line up with the pencil mark and that way you'll get a perfect 
wrap around that curve because if you start down here and you may just come down just that little bit more than you should you're going to bring it around here and it's not going to quite reach start from the middle and work your way out because that way you know you're not going to go wrong so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue here and here and this is what I was saying about if any of this glue oozes out before we distressed it it will just create a little barrier and then you just wouldn't get your ink kind of covering it as well whereas now it doesn't matter if anything kind of oozes out. So I'm just going to sit that there, right over, kind of halfway. Just bang on in the centre, that join. So just hold that there for a second. Okay, and now you can see when we wrap that, it's going to come down both our sides perfectly. So I'm just going to go in and I can just get the glue now on all of those tabs and I'm going to do all this half in one go and then again I can just go in there okay so now you will have that and you will have a tiny bit overhanging here and here but it will be bang on the same and that's what you want so I'm going to go and do the same on this end so again work from those two middle ones get them positioned and then work your way out That's the lid all done. Now you do actually need three hinges, not two, so I've just gone ahead and die cut another one. And one of them, this is the one you want to attach first of all, and you want to attach it inside here. It's up to you kind of which way. Yeah, I'm going to do it that way. So I'm just going to apply some glue. Because this is the hinge that we're going to use to attach it to the box. So we need to get this laid down first, and then all of this will kind of close that all in so you won't you won't actually see any of this inside so you just want to fold it like over like that make sure it goes you know right up to that fold like this. okay and then once that's set we can just kind of move that a little bit more with this piece here I've just folded when I you know was distressing all the corners but you're going to stick a hinge on both sides here so it's got a basically it's got those flaps then on all of the sides so I'm just going to add some glue here just also add a strength and just give the whole thing its its shape so again stick that one you do want to make sure you get it bang on you know the fold of the hinges lines lies lines up perfectly with the edge of this piece here okay that's dry now so what I can do is just fold it that way as well so just kind of manipulate it so it, it moves quite freely okay this is why it's good using the thick cardstock now what's going to happen is this is going to stick all inside there so rather than it being that flimsy kind of hollow lid it's going to become very very strong that will all go in in a minute with the, just this hinge hanging out because that's how we're going to then stick it down onto this now I'm just thinking because I think I may have added I think I added in an extra hinge because obviously I've kind of made this one up myself which is why people have requested it because it needed something yeah, or did I actually end up going for, because I sent that one off, the sample's already gone, and um, that was the one obviously I shared, but I'm just trying to think, I, I'm sure what I'd done, because you don't need one of these tops, ah, that's it, I remember, nope, it's fine, because <laughs> I do a lot of these things and I'm not filming, so, um, you know, I don't write things down, I don't always remember exactly how I've done it, and then when I share samples, because although, you know, all the dyes are here and that's the inspiration they've given, I'm always making things up. I'm always doing something slightly different. And um, yeah, I think that's the fun. It's nice to be able to do what they suggest, but also do more as well. So I've just taken a little bit off them, just some little wedges, just so it all slides in easier. But I am going to add glue. You're gonna have to kind of do all, all at the same time, because it's all gonna go in. Yeah, I remember how I done it now. I was kind of thinking, how did I get that other tab there? Really easy, and you're you're not you know apart from cutting that extra hinge, you're not actually cutting any more cardstock. So just slide those all in like so, and you might find a pokey tool come in handy because you're just obviously you're working within a hollow space. But once that glue grabs. You're good to go. You just want to get it nice and flush. 
Just hold that all there for a minute. And you still have that tiny little overhang. It just tidies everything up, just having that little bit free. Okay, I've got a little bit coming down there. I'm just gonna trim that. I think I went too far over to one side, but that's fine, it's easy to tidy up. But now, you've got this piece, okay? Next, we can start putting this together. Now, we've die cut two of them, okay? But on one of them, you wanna cut off this whole section, and it's this piece that we're actually now gonna stick onto this one, like so. And those are your little flaps, and it will give you a really nice closure when you go to put it all together. So what we're gonna do now is you're gonna add some glue onto this one here. But some of you have been watching this thinking, what is she doing now? <laughs> you're then gonna stick this one over here. And then you're gonna add glue onto one of these. Bring this around and stick one down there. And then again, add glue on that one. And I'm actually going to bring my Kalau in for these larger sides just to add some strength. Then on this one. Okay, so where you've got the raw edges here and here, that will be the back. Okay, so you'll have those nice sides there. You want to grab this one and you're going to add glue all to that hinge. And I would lie this down. It's a little bit fiddly. Once it's kind of again grabbed, it's, it's okay. But you want to hold this one up and push your hand in there so that can all sit perfectly. Oh, I haven't stuck that on yet. We'll do that in a minute. I thought, why is that moving? <laughs> but you're sticking that in there. Make sure that that fold of the hinge runs right along the top of the box here. And then I'm going to grab this one. Put that in glue and stick it on there and it will perfectly sit within that section and again it will just strengthen that lid make sure your hinges all come in perfectly so I'm just going to leave that there just to dry for a minute and I'm just going to talk you through the padlock and this one here so I went and die cut the gold then two lots of the fun foam and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to die cut again in this craft card because this will stick better than the mirrored card onto this here okay and then i'm just cutting a tiny bit of black card and i'm going to stick it over the keyhole here and then i can just add glue to the rest of this and then stick that onto the back and it just I don't know, it just adds a bit more of an authentic, just want to rub some of that glue in there. It will all dry clear, but just so you don't have any clumps through the keyhole. Through the keyhole. I used to love watching that. Okay. And just make sure it's all lined up. Won't take long for it to grab. I do recommend if it starts to curl, just put something weighted on top of it, because um, Fun Foam does have a tendency to, to curl up when it's, you know, got a, a liquid on it but now and any glue that might be on the mirrored card just let it dry and then it rubs straight off but now with that black in the inside I just think it gives it more of an authentic look and then on the back it's just like that but you're not going to see it but I'm going to stick that onto this bit in a moment okay and then we can grab this one pop in your sides and the whole thing will close in like so <laughs> love it okay next I'm just going to decorate it so I'll put this on high speed but I'm just going to stick these in all of the corners so here here and here and then four on each side four on the back and then I also done them on here and here and on the backs of the lid the same. Again, you don't have to do as much as I have, but I do love that look. And then with the kind of decorative piece here, you stick this onto the top here and then that on there. But I think I'm gonna do it that way. I think that's how I done it before. Anyway, you'll see me. I'm gonna, like I said, put it on high speed and get that all stuck down.
a beautiful treasure chest style gift box and then there's inside you could line all this if you wanted to but I do think these will make brilliant little favours for if you're having a child's kind of maybe um, pirates themed party how nice for all of them to have something like this to take home instead of a little goodie bag or something and you can just fill it with you know lots of the gold coins the chocolate gold coins I think would look fantastic in that so it's certainly something that I think you could make around Christmas time as well and these would be lovely again party favours and have a bit more of a, a Christmas theme with them you can have nice tags on them and change the colours and stuff but I think they're gorgeous so hopefully that's helped those of you that have asked for me to show you how I made it into a treasure chest um, all the links to everything as always will be shared below and I'll be back again very very soon with another tutorial thanks for watching bye